In a recent appearance, the notorious atheist Richard Dawkins limited the lost influence of Christianity, going so far as to declare himself a cultural Christian. While achieving a level of notoriety for his work in the field of biology, Dawkins became best known for his vocal opposition to religion in general and Christianity in particular. Now that public Christianity has been purged from his native Britain, the biologist is surprised that instead of becoming a secular utopia, the country has been slowly conquered by Islam. Like many atheists, Dawkins is discovering too late that the religious beliefs he worked so hard to destroy were in fact the foundation on which his civilization rested. Dawkins has served as a public antagonist to Christianity since the 1980s, but with the publication of his book The God Delusion in 2006, the scientist became one of the most prominent figures in the burgeoning New Atheist movement. The New Atheists saw themselves as champions of enlightenment and reason who would finally purge the last vestiges of religious nonsense from the Western mind, delivering on the true promise of classical liberal ideology. The New Atheist movement was a mainly online affair existing on internet message boards like Reddit and video platforms like YouTube, though there were several conventions and other public events organized around the movement. Along with a few best-selling books, the highest profile draw of the New Atheists were the public debates. Often held at universities, these debates featured personalities from the movement who would verbally spar with apologists from different faiths, but Christianity was by far the most frequent target. Before Ben Shapiro became known for owning blue-haired college feminists with facts and logic, the New Atheists were making a spectacle out of deconstructing Christianity on college campuses. The New Atheists lost as often as they won, but many of them had mastered a snarky style of sophistry popular at the time, and the crowd was on their side. Sam Harris, Daniel Dennett, Christopher Hitchens, and Richard Dawkins were dubbed the Four Horsemen by their fans, an apocalyptic vanguard on a mission to end the dominance of ignorant religion and deliver humanity into a more advanced age. Ayan Hirsi Ali, a former Somali Muslim, was often cited as the fifth horsewoman and regularly attended atheist conferences. Along the way, the four horsemen were warned by their opponents that the Christianity which they were gleefully dismantling was not just a collection of Bronze Age myths, but a critical aspect of society. Dawkins and his new atheist brethren dismissed these warnings as the last desperate gasps of a dying superstition which was attempting to stay relevant in the face of modernity. After all, religion was the refuge of the weak and the ignorant, a silly fable that backwoods rubes told their children. Nothing could stop the inevitable march of progress and the new atheists would be its intellectual champions. Hey guys, I need to tell you about today's sponsor, New Founding Talent. Look, we all know that the job market is a disaster right now. Based people can't find good companies to work for, and good companies can't find anybody to get the job done. The competency crisis is very, very real. So how do we get these two incredibly important groups together? We need organizations like New Founding. New Founding has created a network of high-excellence professionals who are seeking to join grounded American businesses. These are individuals, often in elite organizations, who are ready for a team and a mission that supports their values instead of working against them. Aligned companies are already using this network to hire high trust, exceptional individuals who can match the culture and mission of their teams. So if you're looking for better employees to build a better world, you need to go ahead and apply for access to the New Founding Talent Network at newfounding.com backslash talent. You'll get connected with candidates who will build your business. That's newfounding.com backslash talent. Check it out today. The first hint that all may not be well inside the brave new world the atheists had forged came from the birth of the woke revolution on college campuses. New atheism had always been dominated by leftists who thought of themselves as pro-feminist, pro-LGBTQ, and anti-racist, but now many of their allies were making very strange claims. Feminists were pretending that there were no statistical differences between men and women. Minority activists were claiming that all differences in material outcomes were due to racism, 
and LGBTQ activists were claiming that men could become women. All of this was obviously empirically false, and this struck at the core of the atheist belief that religion had been the primary cause of opposition to scientific truth. Christianity had been successfully purged from the public square, but instead of being replaced with reason and rationality, it had been replaced with a far more extreme denial of reality. The second and most significant blow to the new atheist delusion followed the migrant crisis in Europe. As millions of migrants flooded the shores of Western nations, it quickly became clear that the lack of cohesive religious identity made it difficult for the native populations to resist the cultural onslaught. European elites raised on a steady diet of liberal ideology couldn't formulate a reason to deny entry to the large influx of Islamic migrants, and in many cases competed to see who could be more accommodating. While these immigrants were happy to soak up the financial plenty of their new host nations, they had no interest in assimilating to a culture that they believed to be weak and decadent. Islam had very different ideas about how to deal with pride parades or scantily clad feminist protesters, and the sheer size of the migration meant that large ethnic ghettos could form to protect those beliefs from liberal re-education. Terrorism, sexual assault against women, and no-go zones where police dare not enter became commonplace. This is the malaise that Douglas Murray managed to capture in the title of his book, The Strange Death of Europe without Christianity to spiritually animate the other aspects of its cultural identity, Europe seemed to slowly lose the will to live, abandoning its fate to a new, energetic population which was fundamentally hostile to their way of life. In his interview on British radio, Dawkins focused on the lost Christian symbols of his youth as Ramadan replaced Easter and abandoned cathedrals became mosques. The biologist reiterated that he was happy to hear that fewer people believed in Christianity, but that he was sad to see the hymns, Christmas carols, and Christian churches that he associated with England give way to another culture. Richard Dawkins is a child clutching a handful of dead flowers he cut from their roots long ago, wondering why they've wilted. Despite the repeated warnings from his Christian interlocutors, Dawkins assumed that the traditions which formed his cultural identity were silly and unnecessary things that could be discarded without much consequence. The scientist also assumed that a respect for scientific truth was a universal instead of being the very particular result of a specific culture. So now Richard Dawkins, the arch enemy of religion, has followed in the footsteps of his new atheist colleague, Ayan Hirsi Ali, in declaring himself a cultural Christian, but don't shed any tears on his behalf. Unlike Ali, who seems to be making a sincere attempt at understanding the value of faith, Dawkins still celebrates the demise of religion. His lament is that of an old man who's watching the culture that he helped to murder pass away and finds himself lonely and cold without understanding why. The time of the new atheist has come and gone, and the delusion of a rational, secular utopia is fading into the distance. The future will belong to the faithful, and the only question will be which faith will guide the future of the West. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to get these broadcasts as podcasts, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to the Oren McIntyre Show on your favorite podcast platform. And when you do, leave a rating or review. It really helps with the algorithm magic. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or Instagram or Gab or Substack, if you'd like to get these videos on Rumble or Odyssey, the links to do so are down below in the description. And if you'd like to go ahead and pre-order my book, The Total State, you can do that on Amazon, you can do that on Books A Million, many of the major retailers have it available for you to pre-order. And of course, you can watch all of my videos and read all of my columns over at The Blaze. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, I'll talk to you next time.